We're going to go to the chart of the day. Jeff, you brought it along. You are saying that yeah. the direction of rates can still be higher near term. There's going to be a little bit of a debate here. So that it is, is that signaling something for the beta trade where you can get more bang for your buck? Yeah, so the, the conversation we just had is a good segue to this chart, and it's can this beta trade continue? Can this rotation into value continue? So I thought this was an interesting relationship. It's not beta O'Rourke. Not beta mm. O'Rourke, mm. just beta beta, just beta to beta. the market. Okay. And uh, so you look right, right uh, tenure treasury against uh, high beta versus low beta. And what you see is as rates fall, the beta trade doesn't work. As rates have risen, the beta trade has worked. So the question is, are rates going higher or not? And as we talked about a little bit, I think as a trade in the near term, positioning was so crowded in the fixed income markets that I think there might be still a little bit to go there. Look at TLT, for example. It's come down a little bit, but it's still, I think, in the 95th percent in terms of distance above the 200-day moving average there. So I think you could still see positioning shift around a little bit in the fixed income markets. Rates drift higher, and at least in the near term, that helps the beta trade. What's interesting about the beta trade is next week we have a Fed where we actually might get a hawkish ease. And if we get a hawkish ease... And, and what does that mean? A hawkish ease hmm. is, first of all, a Federal Reserve that was saying they were making a mid-cycle adjustment um, and has had dissension in the last couple weeks from different members. Uh, and then you've had, you know, ex-Dallas President Richard Fisher come on CNBC and say, you know, monetary policy should not certainly be listening to the White House, um, but that... Look, I, I think we could get a case where markets' expectations of the Fed being a friend... Uh, as friendly as we thought it was, may not be so. And that would be, that would be a problem for the cyclical or beta trade. Yeah, and I, th I think you're right about that. And I think it's all about perception. Does the Fed back off because things are actually looking better, so rates drift higher in an orderly fashion, and then people can still shift into beta? Or is it complete panic because now rates aren't going to be low? And so it's still to be determined. So you put a parenthesis around it, and you said near term. Rates might move higher near term. Correct. Beta trade will work near term. How long is near term? And what should you watch for that would tell you that that trade is done? Yeah, I think near term is obviously ambiguous. I think the next couple of months, say, because I do not think trend economic growth has changed. I don't think the yield curve is going to steep into 20 or 30 basis points. So watch the yield curve as a sign for what's going on as it relates to future growth expectations. Because I think as long as that remains constrained, then rates remain in this trading range. And sure, could we go up to 250? Absolutely. But could we go back to 150 and test that too? Yes. We're going to come back and talk, I know, a lot about this in Options Action. That's a great you, show, do, by do, the way. It is when a is great when is that show. <laughs> it's, it's on at 5.30. It's, it's on at 5.30 Eastern time. Stay so, there. So what do you buy what, what Jeff's selling well, here? you know, it's interesting. The S&P 500 on the week is up a little less than 1% on a week that we saw this massive ramp, right, in yields going back to a level where people felt pretty comfortable with. So to me, you know, I, I see that the, the slowdown in the pace of equities, you know what I mean? I don't see that as a particularly bullish thing. And I don't see, I think you need a lot of things to come together. You need the most, whatever you call it, hawkish cut um, we've ever hawkish seen. Ease. Or yeah. ease, you know. Yeah. Hawkish ease. You need some increasingly, um, you know, I guess dovish commentary about the trade war. You need to see a little better data here in the U.S. You need to see some earnings we're, we're going to start to get as we get into October. And then you have a ramp into the end of the year. And that could be the beta trade right there. Because if you get all this other stuff that has not been participating starting to go up because you've had all these other effects you know, moderating, that's the trade to the upside. I'm just not certain all that can happen in concert. Tyler, by the way, you, you, you come here and you visit. It's always a great day. Yeah. You, but I think you're aware that Dan is nothing if he's not consistent. So yeah. he finds a way to turn this very bullish week in reversal into something that, eh. Well, no, but, know, uh, but, but, but no, I'm just saying, like, I, like, optically, nothing really changed. You know, maybe some more soybeans are going to get bought, and maybe we're going to, like, just cave on Huawei. The only I problem mean, like, is you're 200 handles higher. I, I get your point. Well, not 200 handles. I mean, well, well, we're from, trading from between 2,800 12, and 2,900, you know, in that range. Right. Okay. From the 50 week so, moving average, which held this market. Right. And, and that's it. So if you waited on the sidelines and you were negative, you had to be positive. Cool.